What's up, you guys? Welcome to a brand new episode of the Fit Women's Weekly Podcast. We've officially made it through Christmas, for those of you guys that celebrate. It feels like you work so hard to get ready for Christmas, and then like that, it's over. And then we're stuck in this weird limbo stage, right? From Christmas to New Year's, you kind of wonder what you're supposed to do with your life. Well, for us, I have something for us. I have an amazing conversation with Marie Diamond. Marie is a feng shui expert and an energy master and we sit down and kind of talk about it for all those people like myself who are skeptics where it's kind of like what does the color of the wall really mean in terms of our energy that we put out and how productive we are or does it really matter which way my desk is turned well by the end of this conversation let me just say I've got some things that I want to work on. I immediately got off the call and then I talked with my husband and said, listen, I am reorganizing our house. I'm redoing my office space. We got some changes that we need to make in our bedroom. And I think that you guys are going to love this too. So there's a whole bunch of nuggets that you're going to learn about from Marie that you can start implementing immediately. And I love this topic because whether you are a resolution or goal setter or not when it comes to the new years i think we can all agree that we want to start off on the right foot right i love to clean purge things and start fresh and so if you are like me then you are going to love this episode now before we just jump right in there i do want to invite you to apply for my strong start challenge which starts on january the 8th had to think about that one for a second this is my eight week program. You do not have to be a member for Fit Women's Weekly Live. You do not have to sign up for a membership. It is strictly an eight week program. It starts on the eighth, it ends eight weeks later, and this is going to include strength training. It's gonna include cardio training. It is gonna include nutrition. It's gonna include little daily challenges to help improve your movement throughout the day to make it easy. It's gonna imp- uh, include coaching. I'm gonna be your personal trainer. I'm going to be your workout partner. And then of course, you're gonna be a part of an amazing community that's going through this as well. So if you're like, hey, I have so many great fitness goals that I want to accomplish next year, well, then the question becomes, how are you gonna do that? If you don't have the answer to that yet, then go click on the link down in the description so that you can find out more about the challenge. Even if you're like, I don't know, but if you have the slightest bit of interest, click go get the details and then you can fill out the application and we can decide together if this might be a great opportunity for you or not. So that's that. Let's jump in to this episode. Oh, and one more favor, make sure to hit the like button. And if you're not already subscribed, subscribe to the channel. I'm glad that we were able to get this in before the holidays, before the new year, because I think this is a perfect time to kind of set people up. So it's a great opportunity to talk about your book and feng shuiing your home. And I have just so many questions for you. (laughs) So Ms. Marie Diamond, how would you describe yourself if you're introducing yourself? Because I feel like you have so many different hats as far as feng shui master and energy expert. What do you describe yourself being? Well, I would say I'm, first of all, somebody that just wants to uplift people and energize them. And of course, based on to get to that point, I had to learn some um, techniques, right? And some tools. So for me, I'm a feng shui master, that's why I'm the most known for. But of course, I'm also known as one of the master teachers in the secret, in the global phenomena, the secret. But, you know, for many people, I'm also a business and personal mentor. And so that's also another part of my consultations that I do because I I love working with, you know, making sure their energy is on the highest level with their mindset, with their their way of being. Um, I'm not an expert in body energy. That's not my my expertise, but all the rest of energy and spiritual energy, I'm I'm the woman for you. So do you mind, because I read somewhere that you, at a very young age, realized that you could kind of read people's energy. And so yeah. I love that you just said that you're not a body energy master. What, I, as someone who's not really, I don't understand energy. And I think it's such a cool concept, especially for people that are able to like see auras and see the energy coming off of people. What type of energies are there? And how did you know this was something that you could do? Well, you know, as a child, I thought everybody really could see the same thing as me, to be honest. <laughs> Right. So it's just I I could see, you know, there was this glow around people's body and I could see if the glow kind of didn't. Right. And then I knew that they were kind of sad or lonely or and if it kind of turned very, 
you know, harsh colors. I knew they were like angry, even if they didn't show it. Um, I just, you know, could read people's mood at that time, right? And that was very helpful for communicating, first of all, with um, my parents, especially my father, who was um, someone who was at post-traumatic stress from the war. So I was always trying to read his mood and I could see like on the glow of him, right? So that was around him because sometimes I couldn't see it from the physical body. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that was kind of a survival technique for me because I was like, I need to know, get out of your way, out of his way because he becomes aggressive. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that was kind of uh, what I first saw. But then I started seeing that it was like, even in the houses I visited, like I would go to a place and I was like, there was a certain glow or not, you know? Kind of like you and could walk into a house and you could feel that there was love in yes, that family. Correct. Or but it was more than feeling because I think a lot of people can feel the vibe of a place, you know, intuitively we can come somewhere. We're like, Oh, I don't feel so comfortable here. Mm -hmm. Or this is not such a positive energy here. And then you want to leave, like even the restaurant, you don't want to keep hanging out. There is something off. You just don't know what it is. But for me, it was more a visual, you know, and it was like, it's almost like I could see there was like fog, you know, it's like, it was outside in, in the air was like, becomes like darker and so I could see that like in a house yeah so it's like what I remember but of course I fine-tuned that more and more um, by using it to be honest you know the more you use the more you practice a muscle the more it becomes stronger so does that yeah, become exhausting for you as well to be able I because I'm assuming that makes you a very empathetic person and sometimes I'm an empath and it's exhausting at the end of the day to hold on to other people's emotions too yeah. Well, I think that's one of the reasons when I was uh, quite young, I was about seven, um, I already had a spiritual mentor coming sometimes to me. And um, I, I think I was already exhausted at that time. So he gave me like a, a very special practice, like a visualization with colors. Mm -hmm. And we call it the tubes of light. And I started using it because I think I was so sensitive that I sometimes couldn't really live a normal life. I mean, I sometimes would avoid going to people's homes or family or even go to shopping with my mom because I was like, just, I could see too much. Right. You know? And so by doing this meditation, I felt like I could stay more with myself. I could still look at it, but it did not impact me anymore. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I had to, I remember when I was nine that I, I really was praying to God. I said, please turn this off. <laughs> <laughs> this is too exhausting, right? I'm just yeah. amazed that even when you're a child, because I really feel like sitting into the emotions of being empathetic and feeling energy is very much like a new age. I feel like a generation Z thing. So I give your parents a lot of props for working with you at such a young age with that. Yeah, they they actually it was really interesting. Before I was born, um, they were they were Catholic, you know. We lived in Belgium, and there was a, a priest that could see, and he he told my parents that I would be a child that would be able to see like him. Um, and even I was my mom was pregnant, and so and they said, you know, whatever she's telling you, just trust. It's a, a gift from God. So they always kind of lived with that and when I would say something because later on I would say sometimes things about oh your grandfather is sick on his heart or you know I could I start saying things and they would listen to me, um very much and so it was like always part of my life and and you know as my parents did not condemn it right um it was like okay this is cool I can say it yeah that's really cool. And so when throughout your journey, did you also start learning more about feng shui and how you can connect your talents to help other people? Yeah. So for me, it really started after I was 15. I had, uh, I was run over by a truck and I had a near death experience and I went really to the other side. I went to the light. Um, and it was very interesting before I went to the light, I was out of my body and I was in the ambulance and my mother was rushed to the um, accident place, but they already had put a fabric over me because they were like, she's gone. And so my mom started yelling, please revive her, right? And so, and I saw my mother in the ambulance and I was thinking, what is she doing here? Because she was not with me at the accident. But what I also saw, I could describe this uh, man that was re reviving me, like the ambulance uh, nurse. 
like I could describe him later to my mom. He had blonde hair, blue eyes, curly hair. And I was thinking the thought that came up when I was like hovering over my body. Oh my God, he's so cute. I mean, <laughs> that's kind of how I, I was so A 15 year old brain, right? Well, I 15 year old brain, teenager. And so then I left and I went to like all other dimensions and there was like a, a, a group of beings. I cannot say it's beings of light. They were all white. And they just told me that I had to go back to enlighten more than 500 million people. That was the message that was given to me. Now, I came back three days later and so on. Um, and then I described to my mom, like, oh, you were in the ambulance, you were crying. You were the, and I described, it's like, my God, this it is, is real, you know? Mm -hmm. And so then I also knew the rest was real because I, with one part you can confirm, you know, the rest sure. was real. And that's when I, later on, um, I was really in a terrible health state um, also um, on a, um, a mental level because I lost a lot of my short-term brain uh, memory. And so I just did not know what to do. And so I started again uh, meditating. I started again to like really connecting in with silence because it was so difficult for me to study at that time. Mm -hmm. And then my spiritual mentor came that I later on understood that was a spiritual mentor for me, came back in my life and said, you know, I said, what, what did I do wrong? I've been a, a good child. I've been a good role model. I was, you know, working a lot with the, my church community at that time. I was like, what did I do wrong to God? It was like, that was a question I was asking. And he was like, you did not do anything wrong. You just had bad feng shui. And that's like the first time the word fell for me. And of course, I was researching that. But you have to understand, I was in a Catholic school. So there was no function. There's, the, I'm raised Catholic as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was nothing there. So he just took, gave me some basic steps and he said, it's the, the bedroom that you're in is really attracting negative luck for you. And I didn't understand all the details, but I asked my parents to move to another bedroom that was like the old bedroom of my brothers that already moved out. And like really my luck changed. Like I painted it in different color. I put other images up. Before I was bullied very much at school. Now I was like having all these friends, had my first love. It's like all these amazing things started happening. And I felt so much better. And so that is like the basic principles there. And of course, I had no idea what I could still do with that. There was no books out on this. And I just kept practicing my basic principles over the years. And then I was thinking, you know, when I had to decide to study, like I want to make a difference to 500 million people. I mean, that's kind of what I got from this experience at 15. What do I do? And I was like, well, becomes, uh, if I become an international lawyer, where I can help the United Nations or the governments. So that's actually what I studied. And I became an international lawyer for the Belgian European government. And so, but after doing this for five years, um, and I was meditating and I was, you know, practicing a lot of spiritual, um, you know, tools, I would say. Um, and I was like going so easily through my career and, when I was 30, I was like, I started a consulting company and a lot of my old clients in the government, politicians and so on, they, they started coming to me to be coached and to be mentored. And they were like, we want what you do. You know, you're so easy, so effortless, you're so joyful. You know, what do you do? So I, I thought, start teaching them meditation. I started teaching them some basic practices. Mm -hmm. And then at 31, I was like, I need to focus more on that feng shui experience and I was accepted in Malaysia by a grandmaster in feng shui and I started you know, really working on it and got my master certification and before I knew it I was bringing both the energy level how to meditate having a positive mindset that's also understanding that your home is also part of the equation of creating a positive mindset yeah so that is also part of it how does feng shui how does because there are the skeptics out there and it's like, all right, life's not going. And yes, it's always for those people that are religious. Oh, why does God keep doing this to me? So how does something like painting your wall or changing simply where your desk is placed in front of a window have an effect on the energy that you personally put out? Yeah. Well, that was, that was also a big question for me, right? So because coming from a Christian background, and so I remember the first time I talked to my grandmaster, he said, 
you know, there are three aspects on how you create life. And so the first part is, you know, when you're born, God has given you talents. You know, you're born in a certain place, perhaps some challenges even, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. And um, so what happens is you need to make the most of that. You know, it's like a basic package. You know, your culture, your religion, everybody's born somewhere else. And, and, you know, if you don't do anything with the talents that is given to you, then, well, then you're not fulfilling your full potential. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So some people that call that your destiny, your fate, karma in certain countries. Right. And then the second part is you as a human being, you have a free will to do certain things. Right. You have to really have a good mindset. You have to have gratitude in your heart. You have to take actions towards what has given to you by God. And so for me, it was like, oh yeah. So I try to do that every day. You know, I'd be grateful, you know, try to be positive as much as as possible about myself, not judging people and so forth. So that's your human aspect. He said, that's responsible for a second part. And then the Chinese for the last thousands of years started understanding that the environment is also responsible for the what you create in life and that is where you live where you sleep where you work and that is actually if your home is not like as a temple of energy mm -hmm. right it's like as a beautiful place that you really will affect your mindset if there's chaos around you you know there will be chaos in your mind if there's you know you put all the wrong images around you because literally in the even in the bible it says as a man thinks so he will create yeah mm -hmm. so but it, think about that everything around you helps your thinking yeah? yeah helps you subconsciously you know if you have clutter around you start thinking cluttery mm -hmm. yeah so but there's like this whole system that the chinese for thousands of years have really um unfolded and understood I call it the quantum physics of the environment. They kind of understood the principles, mm -hmm. uh, what what is working in, in your environment, both on colors, both on location. Um, and so it's only since the 1990s that this information started coming over in the West because it, it was always kept very towards certain Chinese high-end families, to be honest. You know, that information was kept very secret. And still today, you know, um, you know, a lot of people say, well, a Western woman cannot know this information, <laughs> but I'm trained in, in the system and I'm classically trained, so I, I can do it, anything a Chinese Feng Shui master does, but uh, because I don't have that background of a culture, I'm still a guest in that culture, of course, mm -hmm. right? And so for me, it was like, oh, I understand there's like three aspects of doing something. And sometimes, you know, praying to God is one thing, Right. Um, and and doing your rituals and and going to your church and so on, that's one part. But you know, if you then come home and look at any church, any temple, it's never cluttered. You know, it's right. like there's certain images there, right, that just help inspire you to connect more with God. Well, the same thing is if you go into your home, if that home is not aligned you know, with what you really desire, you want a happy family and put family pictures around you. When you um, want romance and put images around you, not from single people, but from people that are in love. So it's like, you need to as aspire towards what you really want to connect with. So in that sense, it's not that you make it another church or temple, but there are places in your home that you can really place certain things, connect with your religion. Because feng shui is not a religion, it's just an energy system. Mm -hmm. and, and so it it honors every religion. And what, what I love about it, because I had people from all religions in the world that I've been helping with, and even, you know, archbishops of the Catholic Church. So I I know there, it, it's a totally different system. And so it's like almost like acupuncture. Like if you go to an acupuncturist, they put needles in your body and to kind of create flow. Well, think about everything around you is like an acupuncture. So if you place a picture of, you know, somewhere, it will affect you in some way. Yeah. Because it's a bigger body that your body is in. Yeah. Okay. So you can create a lot of good health for your body. But if your environment is telling a different story, then I always say, who will win? Probably your home because it's bigger. Right. Do you feel like it's very hard today, especially in the Western culture in America where we are? 
full of abundance that most people have a hard time reaching a place of feng shui in their home because we have so much clutter and possession? Yeah. Well, it's, it's not so helpful. Let's put it this way. <laughs> so, so, but you know, there are ways to work with it, you know, and in, in my uh, new book, Feng Shui Alive, we have a very specific technique that I'm using to help people to declutter and, uh, you know, thousands of people have used it and they're like, yeah, it works mm -hmm. because it's very hard when you have a lot of things and everything has a story like, oh, I bought this for Christmas. I got this for my aunt. <laughs> oh, this is from my parents. Like we always have stories, sure. you know, around our stuff. Right. And so it's like we need to kind of get away from the stories. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And to just stay very practical. Like, will I use this in the next year? Mm -hmm. That's like a question you can ask yourself. Like, right? yeah, I will use that uh that dress in the next year. So, you know, it's too small. I will I don't know if I'll ever get back into that dress. And if I get back to that size, I will buy a new dress. Right. <laughs> right. So it is like I'm going to let it go and then creating generosity also with what you let go of by giving it to goodwill, by giving it to charity, mm -hmm. opens the space, you know, for new gifts to come back in your life. So decluttering in the physical world, and we all know that as women, when things are like not, you know, looking great, we want to clean and then we feel better, we want to organize. And sometimes we're like, especially on certain times of the, of the month, right? We're like feeling even more energized to like, you know, get into our closets and get things out. But just imagine if this is a lifestyle, mm -hmm. yeah, and that you always create things in harmony around you, then there will be harmony in your heart and harmony in your mind. Now, because we are getting into the new year, I would like, I'm sure a lot of people want to just set their house up, set themselves up for a really positive yeah. year. Yeah. What are some basic tips? Because I feel like your entryway into your home, right? When you first walk into the house kind of sets the tone of like, yay, I'm home or crap, I'm here again, you know? So are there any yeah, basic yeah, yeah. suggestions that you would recommend for just sitting, uh, yeah. setting up a positive feng shui entry room? Yeah, I always say, you know, you have to think about your home as you're like the queen or the king of your space. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you walk in, uh, you need to feel welcomed, like even if it's a small entrance, right? So you don't have this big hallway when you come in like in a big castle, but just imagine you do that you want to create as much space as possible. That's why I always suggest people to get the coat hanger away from the front door because before you know it, it hangs full of coats, right? It create, immediately creates like a chaos energy. Mm -hmm. Or if you have shoes on the ground, have a shoe box, put them in there, right? Mm -hmm. So that it's like, it feels already more spacious. It's a new year, get a new, a new mat at your front door. You know, because it's like new energy is coming in. You don't want a, an old mat at your front door or carpet that just, you know, with all the dirt from the last year, right? <laughs> I still dirt. have, I've been married for almost 14 years and we still have the same welcome mat. So maybe it's time. <laughs> uh, get some new energy in, right? But also when you welcome, you come in, it's like you have a family, you have, you're, you're married, put a picture of both of you on the entrance, like saying, this is a house of, you know, of course, a current picture, not like when you were married 14 years ago. Yeah. There's something current. Always update the pictures around you. And then it could be like an orchid or a candle or something. When you come in, you feel like, ah, there's a calmness around it. And very important, make sure there's no mirrors reflecting the door. So when you open the door, you can't have a mirror opposite the door because you're actually saying to the good luck coming in, I always say, think about if God would come into your space. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't want God to, to say, get out right away, you know? So like, is God welcome to add your space? Yeah. So that's like a, a first step you can do. That's interesting. Do you believe, I remember as a child, my mom would always make any guests that would come out into our house would make them leave out the same door because of the idea don't leave your problems behind. So you have to uh -huh. like, if you come through the front door, you have to leave through the front door versus some people would try to go out, you know, through the garage or something like that. Have you ever heard of that principle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in, in Europe, we do that too. And and it, it has some meaning to it. You know, it's just like, but in a different way from feng shui, it's like the front door is like your real uh, door to your castle. So it's like when a guest comes in, you will treat them also not about the problems, but like to treat them again as this honorary guest to leave through the door of your of your palace. You don't want to bring them through the garage 
but to the back door, the side door, because then you're actually diminishing your friendship that you have with them because they're treated as servants. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> I think I would always looked at it as like, you're part of the family, just go out that way. But that makes perfect sense. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I can understand that we do that. But, you know, it's like one of the things say to people, don't use your garage to come in and out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you actually, your respect that you will have in the world around you will be less because only servants will use that door or the back door. So I know like in in traditional and in Europe, they were like, if you're from the family, you can go to the back door. But, you know, it's actually not getting the respect that you want. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. Are there any feng shui rules that you would absolutely never break? Like, is there a certain color for painting a room for your bedroom, for example, or like a TV in the bedroom? Are those things that make you walk into a house and go, oh my goodness. <laughs> Well, you know, I was just yesterday uh, with a client of mine here in Beverly Hills. And so the first rule was like, I come into his bedroom and he has mirrors on both sides of the bed, like, or even on one side of the bed is already bad because it doubles who's in the bed. And when you double what's in the bed, well, if you're alone, you double your loneliness. If you do it two, you double. Oh, possible. wow. Okay. Right. Uh -huh. But we also have seen in China, there have been some studies that you actually increase your white blood cells, you increase your weight, you increase your inflammation and your blood pressure when you have mirrors. So I asked him to cover it uh, at night, you know, during the day, it's fine. And he had like, you know, curtains hanging over it. And he said, I have to be honest, my love life has to gone through the roof since you put that there. I'm because sure. <laughs> It's just, can you imagine you have mirrors and you always, you know, when you make love, sure. you know, right? <laughs> you think that that is really sexy, but it actually is not because right. it does comfortable, right? And so it's very interesting. So that's one thing I always, and think about a television uh, is also a mirror in some ways because it reflects. So cover it at night with a fabric or put something in front of it. So, and having a television in the bedroom, I would say, Yes, you know, we are modern families, we have that, but it's not the optimum thing because it's better to have that in your family room or living room. But then one tip I would always say that's very important is, uh, especially for the bedroom, try to avoid uh, anything with water or representing water in the bedroom, like too much blues, like blue curtains, blue carpet, blue, uh, blue wallpaper, or any images with water on it. So what I've seen when people have too much blues or water images around them, they actually become, you know, like literally they feel drowning because you're like underwater. Mm -hmm. And so when it's like your brain doesn't make a difference between what is reality and what is the image. And so people feel like they're more stressed uh, they have more conflicts with each other when there's too much water. Uh, they feel like they're getting more, they're like, you know, they're drowning in their problems. So take that away. The best colors in a bedroom are like beiges, browns, um, metal colors, white, silver, gold, even pinks are gay, peaches, like earth and metal colors are good. I would definitely try to avoid blues, but also reds. If you have everything red, just think about what is your system going to say when it's red? It stands for fire. When there's fire all around you, you will not sleep. You will be on alert. And so people, each time I've asked them to change the colors, then they sleep much better and much calmer and they have better relationships. And I'm an Aries. I'm already fiery enough without having my environment <laughs> trying to make it even worse. <laughs> Yeah, so that's like a tip. But then another tip <clears throat> that everybody can practice, and it's not just in the bedroom, we call it a power position. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I'm talking now to you and I see the door. Like literally, I can see people walking in. So every place I'm sitting, I'm working, I'm, I'm in restaurants, I will always put myself in a position I can see the people coming into the space I am in. Because when you do that, something shifts in you. You're in a commanding position. And literally, we have done some tests. And your even your brainwaves are changing from beta brainwave to alpha brainwave. Wow. So in beta brainwave, we're focusing more on the past, we're more in our worries, in our fears. When we are looking in front of us and we see the door, we go into alpha. And alpha is more and more 
being positive, uh, creative, thinking about the future. But it's also the way you position yourself. Let's say you would put your, your desk against a wall, mm -hmm. then you literally will hit a wall. Like literally there's nobody that can sit on the other side even if they're online, we're talking now online, but you are literally on the other side of me. Right. So I have space there for a chair to for you to sit there symbolically. Yeah. Okay. So what about know, a window? Like my desk right now is up against a window. Yeah. <laughs> is that well, still a wall? It's still a wall because I always think <laughs> people don't come through your window. And the people that come through your window, they are not always so friendly no. <laughs> so you are not in a command position so think about like a king a queen a president of the united states in the oval room he see there are four, four uh, doors he sees all four doors it's the only place his desk can be to see the four doors so he's in command yeah he's the leader so if you want to go to the next level in your professional field you need to really go to that um position and always set yourself up this way. I, I think the door is behind you. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so just turning that around. And I know we always want to see the view, but you know, um, we can still, I mean, I still have the view. It's the view is over there, right? But I'm working. I don't need to look at the view all the time. Yeah. Right. And I mean, technically, I just have a huge oak tree outside my window. So I don't have a great view either. It's just yeah. a beautiful oak so tree. <laughs> Turn that around, you will see you'll be more productive. You will be less procrastinating, by the way, because you are you're you're really in a stronger position. Mm -hmm. That makes actually a lot of sense. Now I yeah. know another thing that you talk a lot about is manifestation. Obviously, you were part of um, the. the Secret, thank you, which was my first self-help movie that I ever watched back in 2006. I had just graduated yeah. college. My husband and I watched that together. We created a manifestation book and really practiced everything. So it had a profound change in me. So thank you for that. When it comes yeah. to manifesting, what are some simple rules, again, that people can apply? Um, I want them to get your books. I don't want you to share like too much on feng shui or this, but I do want them to get some stuff where like, I can do that and I need more. So I, I yeah. think I saw on your Instagram recently that you posted things of like, just being aware of where you post your manifestations with yes. whether it's images or quotes. So what are some really powerful things that people can do and yeah. some common ones that they get wrong? Yeah, 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 for sure. So, you know, in, um, in the secret, we talk about writing your goals, making sure you're focusing on what you want in life, what you desire. You can write it down in a manifestation book. Some people create a vision board. And so based on, uh, on that, you know, some people like put this uh, information everywhere or this, it's sometimes on the fridge. I even placed, seen people putting a vision board on the fridge or even in their bathroom, to be honest. And I'm like, I always say like, put it in a place where there's activity, right? Where you are, you can sleep even in a bedroom, that's fine. In the office, your workspace, in your living room, wherever you feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. That's the first step. And then if you have a vision board, make sure, or you have a, a book, a manifestation book, make sure you remind yourself regularly about it. Read it, look at it. Because, you know, it's not because you've written it one time that the universe gets it. Remember, okay. you are the universe in yourself. So you need to all the time remind yourself of, it. and then always write it everything you write write it in the present tense always write it as it already is happening i am i have you know so as you're saying it now the universe doesn't oh god doesn't make a difference between now and the future there is no timeline in the quantum field mm -hmm. so we need to really write it as it is like before i was a global best-selling author i would always write i am a global best-selling author right and i wrote I'm in a movie seen by millions of people that would transform the world. I wrote that in 2002, put it on my vision board. Yeah. And four years later, I'm in the movie, The Secret, that has been reaching more than 500 million people. So do you read one, those every single day? Yes. Yeah, so I'm not saying I did it every day, but at least once a week, mm -hmm. you know, I would look at it. I would contemplate about it. I would visualize it. I would close my eyes. And seeing it, but also seeing it not from a perspective, oh, this is not going to happen, but like seeing it and like have this wondrous child in you that is like happy and excited for it. And then from a feng shui perspective, there are places that we need to put 
our uh, journal or a manifestation book or our vision board. And so based on your birthday, you actually have a specific compass of action that works for you. And that is your birthday when you're born and also your birth gender, because it connects with your energetic profile from your birth. And so what you then do, you'll, you can actually get the free app, Murray Diamond, you put that into the app stores and you download the free app and then it will ask you to put these things in and you will get a, a compass. And so the specific compass that you will have and that compass literally will show you, I'm kind of showing you, will show you like directions and you will okay. see one will have a success of action. Now mine is Southwest, yeah? Now it can be that yours is East. Now it's all explained in the in the book, Feng Shui Your Life. But, um, you know, what I do is I put my vision board, I put my manifestation books, right? I put that in my success of action. Because even if I don't think about it anymore, then at least it's still in the right direction because, Feng Shui is all about wind and a flow of the wind. And so the wind direction, it kind of brings it into the right wind. And so a lot of people have seen an, I would say, an increase of their results because they put their vision board and manifestation journal in their success direction. That's awesome. When you start to create a manifestation board, is it better to do it in like a physical board or like my husband, for example, has a manifestation screen on his computer is that yeah. just as efficient or is it better to physically write and cut pictures out and make a physical board well you know i would say um both work in the sense that you're doing creative work mm -hmm. yeah but what i always say to people I put in the center of your mood board or vision board a picture of yourself because you're the center of the universe it, all the things that are around you is your galaxy that you're creating of manifestation. But if you're kind of creating something and the universe is like, well, who is it, right? Then it's like, it's not really happening. So put in the center always a picture of yourself or your name if you can't, don't want to put a picture, mm -hmm. right? Like I am, you know, Kindle, right? So you put that there. And so I like more to really be even more physical and, um, you know, start taking things out because the more kinesthetic we work, the more we write it, the more we connect with it. And I always would say, um, at least also, this is like a contract you make with the universe. So sign your vision board, you know, put your name on it, the date you put it there. So you're like telling, this is my contract that I, I claim for myself, right? Right. And, you know, and, and anyhow, sometimes I say to people, just make sure you take a picture of it, put it as a screensaver. That's why, you know, if your husband does it in a different way, I would say, yes, you know, that's okay. It, the more creative you are with it, the better it is. Mm -hmm. The more intentional you are about it, make sure there are both goals for your success, for your money, for relationships, for your health and well-being, and also for what inspires you. Like it could be education you want to do. It can be how you connect with God and the universe, your teachers, your coaches, you know, your favorite podcast, you know, <laughs> anything you really would love to have there. Um, so make sure it is a complete, not just money, right? Because that's not how the universe works. Right. I love it. I know that we're coming up on time. So my last question to you, before we let everyone know where they can find out more information, they can check you out on your show and your uh, website and get your book, obviously. But coming up, Everyone's like, my life is cluttered. I want to get started. What would be the first room or area of a house that you think that people would get the most bang for their buck at starting with when it comes to feng shui? Well, if they have a workspace, then I would first say start with your workspace because that's where you create the most income, mm -hmm. right? So that's where I would focus on. The second, if you don't have that, start with your bedroom. Yeah, because even you know, in the bedroom, if that is not uh, in the right energy, then when you wake up in the morning, you're not energized to go to your work or to start your day in a good way. So, but if you have a workspace, I always first work there because that's where you create the money. What about cars? I feel like a lot of people probably neglect their car when they're sitting in it probably for multiple hours per week. And Ooh, like, yeah. I have a friend whose car is terrible and I get in there and I'm stressed out, you know, <laughs> I'm like, how do you deal with this? <laughs> 
Yeah, you know, I always say to people at least, you know, once a week, you know, get all the cans and the, I don't know, the Starbucks uh, um, plastic out of your car, <laughs> right? Because it starts smelling. Just always make sure there's a nice smell also. And a lot of people, and I love that, they hang something where their mirror is like images of their family or some religious symbols. I like that actually, because it keeps them, you know, to know that I need to be extra safe because of this or I'm extra protected. So I have uh, my St. Christopher. It's been there since yeah. I was 15. <laughs> yeah. So it's beautiful to do that, you know, um, because it, it just gives you a, a feeling of safety. And I'm sure they are taking care of you, their safety also. So, um, yeah, but make it, uh, you know, it, it becomes a lifestyle so that everything that is cluttered is like, even yesterday I was working the whole day and like before I started, I make sure even my desk is organized, mm -hmm. you know, because this is my aura field, this is my energy. And if I want to talk to you, I, everything around me needs to be in harmony because how can I otherwise share my energy with you and your listeners and viewers? I love it. Well, thank you so much, Marie. I could, I could literally pick all of this up and go and talk with you for hours. What about the bathroom? What about advice. the bedroom? Yes. I just want to give you one advice. You have a mirror behind you. Uh, no. My husband hates mirrors. Mirror? No mirrors. Uh-uh. Oh, it's not a mirror. Oh, it is literally. Oh, it's a, a doorway. Oh, that's, yeah, okay. that's our kitchen. <laughs> okay, right. My no, husband has an office, so I've converted my dining room is my office, so we each have a do office space. <laughs> yeah, so because, you know, when you have a mirror behind you, that's not good because you're kind of, you know, showing yourself. Mm -hmm. But if having the kitchen behind you, it would be good for you to have a screen there. Yeah? Okay. So not to have a hole behind you. Okay. Right? you will feel more respect and recognition for all the great things you're doing. Okay. Thank you. I love that. No, there's no mirrors in our house because again, my husband and I were both raised Catholic too. And he has a fear of 3 a.m. waking up and seeing not something good in a mirror. <laughs> well, no, he's, he's right on that. Yeah. <laughs> well, Marie, where can people find out more about you and your book? Because I know that I'm going to be grabbing a copy for myself. Yeah. So the book Feng Shui Your Life is available on on the good bookstores, Barnes & Noble, for example, um, and on Amazon, of course. And of course, they can connect with me. First of all, they can get the free app because there's a lot of information there. Um, and then they can go to mariedime.com. Uh, they can do my Instagram, Mariedime Official, where we post every few days amazing tutorial videos. And there's a YouTube channel. There's also a Mariedime podcast that you can mm -hmm. go to. So there's a lot of free information around, but of course the book will be like helping you to get like a really, it's a beginner's guide to go step-by-step step through everything. And um, I'm looking forward to, uh, to share this information with you. Thank you so much, Kindle, for having Thank me. Thank you so much. This was fantastic. Thank you so much again. And happy holidays to you and your family. Happy holidays. What'd you think? She is so passionate and I just love talking to her. You can just tell that she truly like believes in what she says and she wants to just spread the word on positivity and getting ourselves in the right mindset. So if you're interested, go make sure to check out her book. I'll make sure to link everything down in the show notes. And just a quick reminder, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, what are you waiting for? Go ahead, hit the subscribe button and like this video. I put out all this content for free. So I guess you could say that the only payment that I request is to hit the like button. And remember, if you're interested in the Strong Start Challenge, or even if there's the slightest amount of interest, go click the link down in the show notes. You can find out more about it and also fill out the short application so that we can decide if this might be the right option or not for you. All right, you guys, go have yourself an amazing day. And I probably will not get a chance to ch chat with you more between now and New Year's. So happy New Year's.